and joining us live now to take a look at all of this conversation is Taufik Ghani, who's the Lagos PDP Publicity Secretary. And also joining us is uh, Sheye Oladejo, who's the Lagos APC Publicity Secretary. Good to have you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning to both of you. I can see that Mr. Ola Dejo is there. And if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. I'm not able to reach uh, Mr. Ghani on the other end, but let's begin the conversation with you until we are able to connect. I am here. I can hear you well. Oh, excellent. Thank you so very much uh, uh, to, to join us this morning. Let's begin the conversation with you, uh, Mr. Sher. Tell us how successful was your primaries, which saw the emergence of Mr. Biru on Friday. Thank you very much. The, the primary was very successful. The process was seamless. It followed the dictates, the provisions of the Constitution of our great party, the APC, which uh, gives us the opportunity to decide our candidacy for elections through that direct primary and by consensus. And uh, in our wisdom as a party, the leadership and the followership in unison decided to use consensus, uh, but we still went to primaries uh, using affirmation and ratification of the consensus candidates. Hmm. The, the process was seamless, and we are all set to retain those seats come the 31st October by elections. Right. However, uh, Mr. Ladeja, there are unconfirmed reports that some aspirants, like former Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Iku Foriji, Foriji rather, was forced to step down, hence the consensus candidacy of Mr. Abiru. How, how do you react to that? No, no, there, there, was, there was nothing like that. The candidates willingly came together to decide Mr. Tukumba Bureau should carry the party flags. And there was no issue of anyone being coerced or forced to step down. It was willingly done and um, they showed some understanding on why we should achieve cohesion. And uh, the same reason whereby after the primaries, we now start setting up committees for reconciliation, thereby distracting us from the one of task ahead of winning the elections come uh, end of next month. There, there was nothing like anyone being forced to, to step down. Very far from it. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Let's now speak to Mr. Uh, Ghani on the other end. Please run us through the primaries of PDP, which saw the emergence of Mr. Badamosi. It was glory, all glory to God, uh, because uh, not only that, we came out very, very, very successfully having a very uh, interesting primary that we were indeed able to overcome the fears and threats that we had was going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, if it had happened, we would have put the political system in Lagos far back again. And the threat was coming from opposition, and I'm not being specific here, and anybody who thinks that the opposition means the party, then that person has skeleton in his cupboard. But we had very good intelligence report that people were coming to disrupt the primary, and we had a, a real load of, uh, of, of the security agents. And I want to use the opportunity to thank the gallant policemen who were there. They were dead all through. And, and, and they were able to revolve some of an attempt, of, of, of attempts to, to, to cause a uh, in, in any case, at the end of the day, we produced the man who is a very well-known person in Lagos politics, Babatu Dolari Badamosi, having a very strong uh, political history in the family. Uh, uh, we had keen competition amongst four of them. Indeed, there were even five, uh, but uh, one of them uh, did not participate uh, uh, because she believed very well that either of the four can still go ahead and represent Lagos very well. So, right. but at the end of the day, we thank God that we produce the battle Olani Badamosi, who will feel that Lagosians are expecting to be given the opportunity at any level to even serve, having, having proved 
had so many other opportunities given that he can do better. He can do well. So we thank God that at the end of the day, we have it. It is now for Lagosians to come and determine who, especially in the, from the Lagos East Territorial District, who goes to represent them at the Red Chamber. Lagosians in that senatorial district are very, very deprived. They don't have dividend of democracy. They have been having promises and promises. And we may both to challenge that the only good things that you can find that Lagos uh, is central district are seemingly federal government pressures, not really the presence of the Lagos state government. And so it is going to be an area that we will make them decide whether they want, they are satisfied with what they have now or they want better. We have given you somebody that you know on ground physically. You have seen what he can do. You can see what he has done. And if you want him to go and represent you to be indeed an indigenous of Ikorodu himself, so from the Lagos East Senatorial District, you are probably going to have for the first time uh, a full indigenous a full indigenous of that senatorial district going to represent them. I'm aware that uh, maybe the other uh, uh, main uh, candidate is also for the Korodu, but I don't know how full he is. But our candidate is fully an Korodu indigenous. All right, well, of, we'll, uh, of we'll give time to further that. But before now, uh, Mr. Ghani, the report out there was that APC only has itself to beat. I'm wondering what has changed. Hello, come in here, please. Okay. I said before now, reports indicates, uh, or reports out there, was that APC has only itself to beat. And I'm asking, what has changed? That APC is the, is the party to beat. Has only itself to beat. What has changed now? Has only itself, itself to beat. Oh, no, 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 that is laughable. And indeed, I can tell you that for the first time in going to elections, the, the APC is more than jittery than ever. And I tell you, it's a straightforward thing. I, I, I mean, I'm not doing busybody here, but somebody has said that uh, um, some, some person stepped down voluntarily. But we are, we are also acting on the opportunity that was created by that imposition of that candidate that they are bringing. And those persons who were not allowed to participate, maybe that is what you even mean by saying that they have themselves to, to defeat. They are the ones who will give to us the victory that we need. And indeed, the fact that the Lagos territorial district is the most deprived territorial district in Lagos State, we are also going to take advantage of that and the inadequacies that they have provided for them in that area will be our asset going into the election. The only area that we know that they always take advantage of is protecting the vote. And they will be shocked this time that the person who, the, who is the candidate, the flag bearer of the party, of the party, you know, since he's been in this race, he has even wanted to be governor and contested under a party to be governor. So, so, so you know well that they are not comfortable. Let they are not comfortable. They, are, they cannot time. be comfortable that they will have somebody like that to contend with. So, and there's, there's no saying... There's oh, okay, may I come in here? This will be a two-way thing, I guess. I will give, this, I will give Mr. Oladej your time now to speak. They know that they have a lot of... Mr. Ghani, hold your thoughts of. there. Hold your thoughts so I could give Mr. Oladej your time to speak. He's also on standby. Now, for you, Mr. Oladej, I'm thank, sure you're hearing you the much. conversation. Thank yes, you, you would respond, uh, but you will hear my question, which is, for many uh, political and non-partisan voters, they might want to argue that APC took a big risk by fielding a not-too-popular candidate in the political cycles, which is somewhat what uh, Mr. Taufik is, uh, Mr. Ghani, rather, is is alluding to what's your thoughts uh, let me get your reactions now let, let, let me just quickly compliment my dear brother uh, mr tafik ghani for for having taken the heart of lamentation to 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 a big trade in his party
you, you, you can see clearly which party is here. We, we have a candidate with a great pedigree. He has paid his deals in both the private and the public sector. This is a gentleman who rose to the pinnacle of his career as the managing director of the bank. He's a very successful bank at that. And was also a commissioner in Lagos State. Talking about background, his dad was a senator in the First Republic and has always been visible. He, he said something about they had a candidate who is a full indigenous. I wonder what that means. So there are part-time indigenous of the areas in, in their party. And let me also say, by now, PDP should really be used to losing to APC in Lagos State. O over time, the politically, they have never had anything to offer. Speaking about their candidate, their candidate was a governorship candidate of a party ADP just a few months ago. You can see how convenient it was for him to jump from ADP to PDP in desperation to, to, to come to government. And, and that doesn't show commitment. It, it doesn't show the love for the people. It only shows desperation. I, I just hope next year, after his defeat next month, he won't contest as a councillor during the local government elections. I can, I can assure you for, for APC in Lagos State, there's absolutely nothing to, to be to be jittery of concerning um, going to a contest with PDP that over time I've had nothing to show politically in Lagos. This is a party, I can assure you, we struggle very hard to have agents at the various polling booths. So talking about being jittery, we know the party that is jittery in all of this. We, we are very confident, not, not being modest, we are going to win these elections. There is very strong Lagos State government presence in this axis. All the various programs of the Lagos State government the, the, these houses are never lagged behind in anything. The, the, the Lagos East Central District is the new Lagos, the new industrial hub of the state. And let me also say that we really need to check out the candidates we are presenting before ourselves. Just of recent, there are candidates, but to make better, mostly flouted the COVID-19 protocol. I mean, that, that speaks volumes about quality and responsible representation. I just hope we can have this conversation again after the elections on October 31st to hear the excuse this time for their defeat, which has been on for, for some 20 years now. There, there's nothing to, to really worry about. PDP, we, we, we know them well, and they get their job beating, I can assure you. All right, well, we won't wait until after the elections. Now that Hello? we have uh, yeah. we have a uh, spokesperson representing uh, the other end that you're referring to. So let, let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Ghani. What's your reaction? What's your response to what uh, Mr. Oladeja just said? Indeed, for those who are doing the interesting thing is that all he has done is just to, I mean, talk on the spaces that are open, talking about the indigenous, talking about the need for us to have change in government, in Lagos State, talking about people participating and their, 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 their duty. So he has not raised any new point. The only new point he has attempted to raise is to further implicate the governance, his governance indeed, I mean, that we have... I, I, I mean, expose the misgovernance that we have in Lagos State, where somebody in his own estate has gone to visit a friend, indeed a tenant in his estate, and then the Lagos State government, knowing well that this man has always been a threat, let us use this opportunity to hold him to have committed a crime, so that he probably will not be able to contest elections against us in the future. And then, unfortunately for them, they got into the court with the array of uh, lawyers and even the uh, attorney general and the commissioner and everybody, they, 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 they disgracefully withdrew the charge against, against uh, the bachelor. So if somebody is coming up to even use that as a point, it means that they are really direct of, against on tackling this type of uh, section as opposition. Because that is not even a selling point for you. Rather, the Lagos State government has to look into the problem that the residents, residents in the Lagos East Territorial District have, and let us have somebody who can be desperate. Let me tell you, for every 100 Lagosians living in that Lagos East Territorial District, 99 are desperate to have a change. And they're going to have this change. We will force them to have this change. All you need to do is, after this program, tune into the Lagos State um, uh, media. I'm saying Lagos State Media, Traffic Radio, EcoFM, and the rest, LTV. And here every day, how Lagosians in that district lament, how balance, balance, I've, I've had balance every time, saying that the government, so, please, please, please. Now they are defeating them. For how long has the Lagos State government 
be controlled by the ATC in mm. different nomenclature. But today, they are saying that they are going to give them first Miller bid. The only man who can produce, who can facilitate this third Miller bid is Baba Today Olaye that I was and I'll tell you, it is not only well, on the floor of the Senate. On the floor there. of the Senate. Baba Today Olaye that I was saying is the owner of the Senate. We need to put this in debate in perspective. I'm not going to the executive. I'll give you time to speak. I'm not surprised because you are not going to the floor. I will give you time to speak. I they will give you time after to all, speak. After all, they should let us talk. After all, after Plus TV here, they have TVC, they have Lagos State Television, they have the CoFS, they have so many other right. media. They uh, should let us talk. Let us use this opportunity and let the Goshen know who they should go and vote for. But, but today, I'll let that I must operate a state within Lagos State. The Amenes State stands out as one of the best today in 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 in, in, in let's say. He's producing or uh, is producing a, a power power. Power that does not fluctuate, water flowing every time. All right, I, I like just to... Go to Amen. I'm not making out that for him now. But you see, let us speak to the truth. Negotiations are seriously defined. If you go and allow a free, fair election today, even the governor will be voted out if it were to be an opportunity to do a vote of no confidence. Okay, I have to give Mr. Ladeja time to also respond to some of the things, issues you've raised there because he, he is eager, itching to speak. Now, you, you have the time, Mr. Ladeja. Thank you very much. I, I, can, I can understand the desperation of the PDP spokesman to, to sell his bad products. The fact remains that Mr. Badamosi is inconsistent. He's not passionate about Lagos. It's showing serious desperation for power by jumping from party to party. He's green in politics. He's never had any opportunity to serve in the public sector. Lagos is too big, too massive, too important to the Nigerian nation for us to start experimenting. Mr. Biru. Oh, I'm afraid we lost him there. Uh, Lagos can produce. Hello? And when it comes to having quality representation at that level, Lagos should put their best foot forward. And that's what Mr. Tokumba Biru represents. Okay. He has been saying people from Lagos State's Central District have been complaining. But let me just tell you, governance is a continuum. People will continue to complain, to make demands, which is legitimate, even in the advanced countries. The same thing goes on there. And as people continue to make these demands, our government continues to be responsive to these yearnings from time to time. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't understand most of these things because, I mean, if you, if you are in a party that is the DNA to always lose elections from time to time, you can predict their reaction, which will be based on desperation and uh, unnecessary, needless propaganda. All right. Let's just reiterate again that, you know, the views expressed are the views of these representatives of the party. Uh, we, we, we give you time to clarify issues that you need to clarify. I can hear you, Mr. Ghani. If, me, and if you can hear me, we would proceed. Yeah, you would proceed to the other question in the, okay. in the interest of time, uh, Mr. Ghani. I'm sure you can hear me. Now, there are also unconfirmed reports that the process was heavily monetized. Um, how true is this? Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. No, let me, please, can you repeat? The yes, question? I'm happy to. Now, there are also unconfirmed reports that the process was heavily monetized. And I am asking you, uh, how true is this? Which process was heavily monetized? The process of the primary, you mean, or what? Or the process of voting in Lagos State generally? Yes, the process the for the... Let me, let me, let me, I, I, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Let me say that, again, my dear colleague of the other end has said that our own candidate has never been in politics, has never, indeed, he, he, he is only minimized the fact. He has never enjoyed anything, either contract, employment, uh, whatever, in the state government. Their own candidate was commissioner for finance in Lagos State under Babatudi Lajin Fashola. It is on record that the highest death that Lagos State government incurred in history was under Babatudi Lajin Fashola, and this was the commissioner then. He was rushed to Sky Bank, which Lagos State government adopted, and even at that, that Sky Bank had to go bankrupt, and another conglomerate took over, and today's Sky Bank is polarized. In any case, I will stop that in, uh, at that. Let me tell let, you, let's there stick is to no the issue way. At hand. Lagos, State, Lagos State PDP 
does not even have the money. Even when we had the federal government, we, we were known not to have that type of money to flounce around. The, the, the party that is known to have that money, that have that coinage of Jawotoke, which in, in Yoruba simply means that take money, take something, and then enjoy yourself, is the APC. The APC is not going to controvert in the political space that they spend more than enough. Let me give you an empirical evidence. They came out to blackmail because they are better at that, and I'm going to concede that to the APC. They have strong, very uh, propaganda, very strong propaganda machinery. They came out to say that PDP was spending billions and billions and billions. And then at the end of the day, PDP, yes, lost that election of the Lord Jonathan, even in Lagos. But, but anybody who has common sense will know that anybody who won that election at that time must have spent even more than Gulag Jonathan. And this was what happened. We have fans of money spent. The way they got the money, we, we, we are not interested in it now because it's a Bible. But let me come back to what is relevant in this discussion. Should be that whether, sincerely speaking, there is need for us to have change in Lagos State. Let me tell you, again, the, the times that we have the best development in Lagos State, I take it whether it belongs to the APC or not, was the time of Ambody, and the secret thing then was that it was the only time that Lagos State had the opportunity of having opposition being part of the government. When we had eight hours of assembly and six hours of first, the reason why at the federal level, at the National Assembly, we have not had that opportunity of good representation is because there have always been one party and they deceive people that they are doing the bidding of the people, but it is a lie. We want an opposition to be one of the three there. This is what negotiations want. This is what they have, we have tweeted, we have received their uh, request. We want a situation where Lagos will now be given that status that they have not been able to achieve since 1999. APC senators have never been able to achieve that status that Lagos State should have. They have never been able to give to the local government and their bacchanalized SDAs the recognition, concerning recognition, they have not been able to improve the road, federal roads in Lagos. They have not been able to do so many other things. Okay, the man who attempted to... to do it, Ambode, Ambode is not a member of my party and I can never, and I can never support him. I'm only, I'm only presenting the fact. All right, Mr. Ghani, I'll give time it, now to... Allow him a second time. I'll it give time to Mr. Ladeja to speak. In, uh, I would give time. Emotions. I would give time to Mr. Ladiger to now speak and to respond. Uh, Mr. Ladiger, do you agree that your candidate is up for stiffer opposition this time around, considering the seeming popularity the PDP candidate garnered in the last governorship very, election? Very far from though it. With another very platform. far from it. The Lagosians were we only remember, but I must say, for flouting COVID nineteen. Protocol and he got lucky that where many Lagosians intervened on his behalf behind the door to ensure that the government oh. did not forge ahead to prosecute him. Be that as it may, the well, only book says you my, my people perish for lack of wisdom. <laughs> you see, the, the lack of wisdom is apparent in uh, my dear brother's reaction to the debt profile of the state. When, when you take loans, when, when you incur debts, loans attached to specific capital projects on the state. That, that's the way it is done everywhere in the world. But, but this lack of understanding is, is appalling for people who are... Interestingly, PDP is also preaching change. Now you can see the, the length of the confusion of that party. And let me quickly say, Mr. Tafi Ghani should be more worried about the way people, quality members are leaving their party in droves in Lagos State. This party only becomes active when elections come up because there's always money to share in their party. The, 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 the celebrated looting spray that, that, that was experienced during the last elections is still fresh in the memory of the people. And after every election, PDP members are always decamping. Why? It's very clear because they're always quarreling about the use of money. If we say parties spend, uh, spend money heavily during elections and one party always imagines the winner, it only shows the party that is popular. Very simple.
and a situation whereby you now start giving excuses after elections. And uh, this party president, as far as I'm concerned, is just about Mr. Bode George, the newly, the new bride by Damasi Babatunde, and the spokesman of the party, who is always crying wolves where there is none. I, I can assure you all these excuses will not be enough to save PDP from, from the imminent defeat. And I think by now, they, they should be used to defeat at elections. Thank you. All right, we'll call it a wrap there. Thank you so very much, gentlemen, for your time, Mr. Shea Oladejo and uh, Taufik Ghani, for your contributions. And do keep safe. We leave Lagosians to now decide. Thank you, Mr.